Hello everyone. Welcome to my next class of redox chemistry. So today's subtopic is calculation of equilibrium constant by measuring redox potential, uh, as well as their advantage and disadvantage. Advantage and disadvantage of redox potential. Okay, these things will be discussed today. So from this discussion, we come to know that how we can uh, uh, conclude that whether a reaction takes place or not uh, among the uh, reactants which are in the electrochemical series and as well as we can calculate with the help of redox potential the equilibrium constant of the reaction of that particular reaction so as for example uh, in in our first example we have taken the example of cerium 4 plus ion and um, cerium 4 plus cerium 3 plus system and iron 3 plus iron 2 plus system okay look, just look at these two lines here don't look at the above line what the reaction exactly taking place you don't have to uh, bother about that you just have a look on these two systems system one is system one is iron 3 plus iron 2 plus that means ferric, ferric ferrous ion and system two is ceric ferrous ion that means cerium 4 plus and cerium 3 plus iron okay uh, you know cerium what is cerium this is a lanthanide cerium plus uranium niobium tantalum all these are uh, lanthanides so cerium is a lanthanide anyway so for the system one, the E0 value is plus 0.75 volt, while the uh, uh, cerium system, it is plus 1.45 volt. Now you try to find that what should be the delta Z value, delta Z0 value. Okay. The, in both cases, the delta Z0 value would be negative because delta Z0 is minus NF E0. Now, if it is minus NF E0, while NF and E0 all are positive things here, so the delta Z value would be negative. So both the reaction would take place. Which reaction? The reaction of reduction reaction. Because according to the IUPAC convention, we have to always put the reduction reaction here. That means here the reduction reaction is what? This, that, that is the oxidant plus electron. Oxidant, which one is oxidizing agent? Which one has greater oxidation, oxidation number? So cerium has greater oxidation number. So this is the oxidizing agent. So cerium 4 plus plus electron equal to cerium 3 plus. What is the next reaction in the next next reaction in the system one the oxidizing agent is uh, iron 3 plus ion because it has higher oxidation um, uh, higher oxidation number so it will accept one electron to become iron 2 plus ion so both the reaction would take place but which one would take place more readily the answer would be the reaction would, which one would take place more readily as uh, uh, which has a greater negative delta z0 value so which one would have the greater uh, negative delta z0 value definitely the cerium system would have the more negative delta z0 value because it has higher positive e0 value okay so from this you can conclude that in the electrochemical series iron would be placed above cerium because iron is more negative than cerium less positive iron is less positive that means iron is more negative than cerium okay so iron would be above the electrochemical series than cerium so iron would form the anode that means iron would release one electron here the anode always releases an electron so here the oxidation reaction would take place that means the backward reaction would occur what is the backward reaction then in order to find out what is the backward reaction we have to think what is the forward reaction forward reaction was iron 3 plus plus electron equal to iron so its backward reaction is iron 2 plus producing iron 3 plus plus one electron that means iron 2 plus is releasing one electron to become iron 3 plus ion so in general cerium 4 plus would play the role of an oxidizing agent while it will react with iron 2 plus ion which is the reducing agent and what would be the products the products would be ferric ion and ceres ion that means Fe3 plus ion and Ce3 plus ion and that is being reflected here cerium 4 plus plus iron 2 plus to produce cerium 3 plus plus iron 3 plus so this is a redox titration reaction you know about titration titration is acid base titration complex metric titration redox titration so this is a redox titration where a redox reaction takes place okay so in this redox titration reaction uh, 0 0.1 molar cerium 4 plus ion is titrating that means from the bur burette you are adding it on the solution of uh, 0 0.1 molar ferrous solution okay so this reaction as a whole would occur now for both cases we have to apply the nernst equation to in order to find out their electrode potential 
exact electrode potential at the time of the reaction. Okay, so uh, in order to put the uh, Nernst equation, what is the Nernst equation? This is the equation six of the Nernst equation. Nernst equation has a lot of forms. It it may have one, two, three, four, five, six forms. So among them, only equation six has been selected here, which is uh, con most convenient because you can calculate the value in the standard state. That means at 25 degrees Celsius, one atmospheric pressure, all these parameters. So um, what is the value of E1? E1 that means for the, the, uh, the E1, the electrode potential for the iron system. This is the reaction one. So E10 plus 0 0.0591 by N. What is the value of N? Here one, only one electron is involved. So the value of N is one. Then log of oxidant concentration by reductant concentration. So this value is put here. In place of E10, you are putting 0 0.075. In the reaction to E2 equal to E20 plus 0 0.0591 by N. What is the value of N? Here also only one electron involved. So divided by 1. Then log oxidant concentration by reductant concentration. Oxidant is cerium 4 plus, reductant is cerium 3 plus. So this, this right hand side has been obtained. Now if the reaction reaches equilibrium, then at equilibrium the electrode potential of both the reaction would be similar. That means E1 would be equals to would be equal to E2. That means all the right hand side of these two Nernst equations would be equal. So hence we are doing in the next uh, step all the right hand sides of these two Nernst equations. Uh, uh, we are equating them and as a result we get this value. What is this value? Look here are the concentration or the active mass of the products and here are the concentrations or the active mass of the reactants. That means this is actually Kc. So this is the log Kc value. So from by applying the electrode potential or redox potential, we can easily calculate the log Kc value from where we can conversely calculate the Kc value. So log Kc equal to 11.84. So Kc equal to 10 to the power 11.84. That is 7, 11, 7 into 10 to the power 11. So this way we can, we can conclude that whether a reaction would take place. Okay. Then uh, which one is oxidizing? Which one? Which one is reducing? Which one? All these things can be said from this redox potential value as well as at the end of the reaction we can calculate the uh, um, equilibrium constant of the reaction. So let us take another example. Another example of two systems where iron 2 plus uh, um, and iron metal and the second system is zinc 2 plus and zinc metal. You find here that both the um, redox potentials values for both the systems are negative. Iron has minus 0.44 volt while uh, zinc has minus 0.76 volt. Okay. Now what should be the delta G zero value of both the systems? The delta G zero value of both the systems are uh, should be positive. So none of the reactions would take place. Both the reactions are reduction reactions. So both the metals iron and zinc both metals have the tendency to lose electrons zinc would lose two electrons to become zinc 2 plus iron while iron would lose two electrons to become iron 2 plus iron okay and these two would spontaneously occur because these are the backward reactions and the for the backward reaction e0 value is positive as a result delta g0 value is negative so backward reactions would take place now if these two half cells are con uh, are, are connected with each other, then what would happen? Here, for this backward reaction, zinc equal to zinc plus 2 electron, the E0 value becomes plus 0 0.76. So it has a very high minus delta G 0 value. While this one, for this backward reaction, the delta G, the minus delta G 0 value is less negative. So zinc would not allow iron to uh, um, occur this reaction. Zinc would, not, um, zinc would not allow iron to undergo this reaction. Okay. What zinc would compel iron to do? Zinc would compel iron to actually consume two electrons to become iron metal. That means if iron gets rusted, rusting of iron takes place by means of oxidation, it may be aerial oxidation or somehow else, then zinc would prevent rusting of iron this way because the delta G zero value is more negative in case of this backward reaction rather than this backward reaction. So zinc would not allow to allow iron to undergo this backward reaction.
as a whole the negative delta g zero value is greater than that of the uh, negative delta g zero value of iron okay so that is why we have put it in the modulus form because since zinc is compelling iron to uh, undergo the uh, oxidation reaction and zinc itself getting reduced so uh, if you write in this manner that zinc is plus 0.76 instead of minus 0.76 because the backward reaction is taking place and in case of iron since the forward reaction is taking place so here e0 value is written minus 0.44 as usual okay so the delta g0 value becomes plus 84.9 kilojoule on the other hand the same for zinc system is minus 146.7 kilojoule okay so the combination of these two is what the combination of these two is actually minus 61.8 kilojoule that is overall it is producing a negative delta g0 value that means the overall reaction among them is zinc metal plus ferrous ion equal to zinc ion plus iron metal okay and you can follow this method what we have mentioned here this overall method by equating the uh, uh, redox potential or equating the electrode potentials of these two reactions by using the Nernst equation you can find out the log Kc value as well as the Kc value so this Kc value have been determined has been determined as 6.746 uh, into 10 to the power 10 so you can uh, uh, work this out work out this problem so you can do it yourself try to do this okay so what we have learned that from the redox potential that it can be used in order to uh, uh, detect which one is playing the role of an oxidant and which one is playing the role of a reductant not only that you can calculate you can also calculate the equilibrium constant at the end of the reaction okay now let us these are all the applications now let us uh, find out what about the uh, uh, oh before before that uh, some more applications here the coating of zinc protects iron from getting oxidized and thus prevents rusting. as i mentioned that when there is coating of zinc which is known as actually galvanizing so you can uh, do this in two ways you can just paint uh, some zinc metal on iron on the iron surface or you can uh, elect uh, electrolyze uh, you can um, take the help of electrolysis process uh, in order to coat iron with zinc so when iron is in contact with zinc then zinc does not allow iron to get rusted okay similarly uh, um, in case of pipelines underground pipelines suppose from Iraq to India a, a huge a lengthy uh, pipeline is there in the underground okay so whole the all the throughout the pipeline is still made is by uh, it is made by uh, iron okay but painting the that iron pipelines with, with the help of zinc is quite costly okay so in order to reduce this cost we have to take another substitute method where the sacrificial metal magnesium is used in the in, in place to place on the underground some magnesium blocks are uh, uh, attached with the uh, with the underground pipelines okay and this magnesium has a very high negative e0 value that means it is much above the uh, above iron in the electrochemical series so iron uh, magnesium can easily provide two electrons in order to uh, stop the rusting of iron that means iron uh, has the tendency as it has uh, plus uh, minus 0 0.44 uh, volt of electrode potential uh, so it has the tendency to lose two electrons but magnesium would not allow iron to undergo this reaction as a result uh, iron remains intact so rusting is prevented similarly uh, in the in the um, ship the hulls of the ship some uh, some zinc metal or similar metals in the higher electrochemical series are attached with the uh, hulls of the ship so uh, time to time you have to change it and the whole body which is made up of iron can be prevented from being rusted so these are the applications now the advantages and disadvantages so advantages you have already come to know what about the advantages of redox potential you can detect which one is oxidizing agent which one is reducing agent whether the reaction would take place in which dire direction the reaction would take place and after the reaction what should be the equilibrium value of equilibrium constant so these are these are all the advantages of redox potential but it has some failures also it has some drawbacks also 
as, as you know in the chemical kinetics. So in chemical kinetics, in order to find out the rate of the reaction or the use of catalysis, uh, these things cannot be, uh, cannot be explained or cannot be, uh, these things uh, can be determined with the help of redox potential. So redox potential fails to indicate these two things particularly. So these are all about the advantages and disadvantages of redox potential and for today's topic that's all about thank you very much see you in my next class okay goodbye